Hello, I'm Rex Childhouse, and because things on the internet seem to lose their date references pretty easily, uh, today is Saturday, May 13, 2023. Uh, I started with uh, Guitars for Vets, a uh, super program uh, hosted by uh, this chapter by the uh, San Diego uh, VA Medical Center, occasionally, usually called La Jolla. And I uh, got into leatherworking uh, kind of by accident because I wanted to make a guitar strap for the guitar I was using. And uh, along the way, I uh, found the Tandy Leather Store here in San Diego. Uh, super place. Really enjoyed it. And then uh, doing some other things along the way, decided I was going to make a wallet. And the reason why is... Uh, this wallet here is the wallet I carried into uh, Desert Storm. Uh, very vividly remember the uh, customs guys going through every single pocket, throwing everything on the table, uh, looking for nasty pictures that weren't there, which uh, was kind of interesting. Why did we have to go through customs? Uh, it was by the United States Air Force. Don't know why they were there. Uh, they didn't check all of our flights, but they did check mine. Uh, they found nothing. And that white spot is uh, paint I got on it uh, while I was painting my house in uh, 1994, right after I retired from the Navy. Uh, I had to pay uh, one of my neighbor kids uh, some money for doing some yard work. So this one here is over 30 years old. Uh, really liked it. Uh, just kind of got tired of it. So I bought the Tandy leather kit and you'll see this one uh, better and uh, later. Uh, really good quality kit, really high quality material. Uh, pretty darn good instructions. I wish they would edit their instructions a little bit. Uh, if I were to write them, I would write them slightly different. Uh, but that's okay. And uh, that wallet produced, or those plans in that kit produced uh, this wallet, which out of all of the wallets you're going to see is the most accurately cut, most accurately sewn, um, slightly annoying wallet because the way the tabs go, they're so close that you have to wedge your card in, you have to play with, get your card in and out. So I went to the internet, uh, downloaded uh, about eight or nine different plans. They were fairly tough to find. Easy to find plans to stamp a wallet, to put a pattern on a wallet, and Tandy has a lot of them. Uh, but to find actual plans to make a wallet, uh, I found to be a little challenging. So um, working from... Uh, <laughs> Working from Tandy's kit, which is a super kit if you're uh, level one, uh, say level one to five for woodworkers, uh, one being beginner, five being ace and base. Um, I, I took Tandy's uh, plans, took some comparisons, some other plans, uh, made this one here, and uh, uh, it came out pretty nice. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. Um, Maybe I'll give it away to somebody, uh, but uh, it, it came out nice. So put that one over there. Um, still slightly annoyed with it. Uh, went back in and uh, made another one and did some design work on it and uh, made this one here. Now I've got uh, three wallets that I only need one really didn't need any, uh, but did some design work and my measurements aren't quite off, my stitching's not quite on, uh, made a mistake of putting my name on it, so uh, if I give it away I have to find another Rex to give it to, but uh, blue and gold, and this time here I stitched 360 degrees. These other guys are not stitched 360, there's a way to do that. Uh, this guy here is not stitched in the valley, uh, so to speak, and uh, this guy is, so I like the stitching on this one better. My measurements, my placements, just a little bit off. Uh, getting better, 
but now I've got three quote unquote new wallets. Then I made this guy here. And uh, I think this one here is actually my best out of all of my made. And this one here is uh, the same pattern as this one here. And uh, a few errors. Uh, Going to show you uh, how I did these, give you the plans for these. Uh, this one here is my last one, the last one I'm going to make. It's got a few errors in it where I missed some measurements, but just going to stick with it. Not sure what I'm going to do with these others. Uh, I'm probably going to keep the Tandy wallet in my pocket as uh, my wallet. So let's uh, get into the details on, on making these wallets. I had a lot of fun with them, and uh, I'll, I'll show you what I did. So let's move on. These are the plans I uh, created. It's a mishmash of uh, numerous plans, including Tandy. I kept the Tandy dimensions um, because for width, because when when that wallet folds, it's uh, kind of snug in my pocket. I have to take it out with your fingertips, so uh, maybe it's maybe it's a pickpocket resistance. Um, this is the back and the bill tab and the inner liner and uh, the dimensions are given to you here uh, I give you the verticals and the indents along the way this one here is for the pockets uh, the bottom piece is the bo back pocket the uh, piece above uh, the bottom piece the second piece going from bottom up is the front of the pocket uh, then I have two tabs on the left side is the verticals where you're going to go from your baseline going up and the right side is uh, your indentations and uh, when you transpose these uh, be very careful um, the tabs are an inch and a half in from the sides and there's only two tabs you have to worry about and uh, the width of these is uh, four and an eighth inches as shown when you um, do this you have to do two of them there's a left and a right and you're going to see it in the video uh, keep them apart uh, just in case there's a slight difference in width uh, when you cut the left keep them off to the left side when you cut the right keep them off to the right side I've rough cut uh, three pieces of leather for the wallet and get them over here uh, as I said they're, they're just rough cuts and uh, I'm going to put the smooth side down on this one and I'm going to care uh, this one to get the rough side to be less rough. I have two options. I can use uh, this guy here and uh, do this. The problem is uh, this area here uh, may give me ridges when I do this. Um, this one here I also bought. I think it's actually intended uh, to go on a power tool like a drill uh, so you can burnish edges and uh, it has a, a rounded and a square side and using the round side uh, works really well doing the square side uh, kind of drives into it which is good too so I'm going to take my water I'm only going to wet down the rough side, the back side I think this is the flesh side I'm not an ace of the base at leather working and I'm going to smooth this out as best I can before we do anything else. And once I get it smoothed out, I'm going to let it dry uh, for a while. I want it to be in a stable state uh, before I start measuring and marking. I don't want it in a damp state where any pressure uh, could distort the size. I think we need a little more over there. I'm not a pro at this. I'm not an ace of the base at this. If you had levels of 1 through 5 for leather workers, I'd probably be at about 1.1 going from 1 knowing almost nothing to 5 knowing everything. Okay, I've got this pretty smooth. Now I'm going to set this one off to dry and off camera I'm going to care uh, these other two pieces. 
leather has textures and in uh, sweeping this one left to right I actually it, it didn't lay down real well uh, sweeping it this way it laid down very well so you may find different sweep patterns to, to be uh, to have different effects on the back of the leather. The next step is to give me two perpendicular lines to work off as a reference and uh, because of my pattern I'm going to take this side over here this is for our backs and uh, once again drive serious leather working hobbyists and professionals nuts I'm using my pen um, to take that etching tool and uh, mylar film and transfer that uh, it gives me uh, too big a line now just to, so that I remember where my scrap sides are uh, put little squiggly lines on them that takes care of the first reference line now as I transfer my pattern I have two reference lines that I can work from uh, left to right uh, bottom to top and I'm going to do that to all three pieces so I'm going to transfer my pattern uh, onto uh, my leather uh, I like using my draftsman or architect's ruler I, I like the ability that it gives me something to hold on to and uh, the width on this is uh, four and an eighth so come down as low as I can as precise as I can four and an eighth come up as high as I can as accurate as I can four and an eighth and then draw this line in now I want to measure it just to make sure I've got it right. Four and an eighth. Measure it in the center. Four and an eighth. And you have to do two of these uh, for the pockets. One for the left, one for the right. When you do cut them out, uh, keep them apart. Keep all the left cuts on the left side. Keep all the right cuts on the right side. Now I'm going to transfer my pattern and down to uh, that line. My first cut is three inches. My second cut is four and five eighths. My third cut is five. My next cut is five and seven eighths. My next one is six and a quarter. My next one is six and five eighths. My next one is seven and a half, seven and seven eighths, and eight and a quarter. Those same measurements come down here, same reference line, keep them as square as you can. I'm going to come off the material just a little bit, three inches. On my plans, on the left side I give you the elevations, on the right side I give you the indentations. The first one at three inches goes all the way across. The second one is indented seven eighths of an inch from each side and because our leather is, our, our pattern is 4 and 8. I just adjust my ruler a little bit. And indented 7 and 8. The next indentation is 3 eighths of an inch from the left side. And this is a line starting at the edge. 3 eighths of an inch. Adjust the ruler, three-eighths of an inch, 
and this one here I'm going to grab my little ruler and draw this angle line in so that I can visually see what pieces I'm working on. This is the front pocket. The next one comes up, goes indented one inch. And uh, one of the things I don't have on my plans, uh, index uh, come in from the left at this point, uh, inch and a half from the left, inch and a half from the right. Come up near the top, same indentation, inch and a half from the left, inch and a half from the right. And then take a pencil, and the pencil has uh, same does the same thing as the scribing tool. The pencil is just handier at the moment, and draw that line. Pencil doesn't seem to uh, leave much a mark on the leather other than the indentation. So that's going to be the tabs um, that are on the plans. And we're going to come in one inch to the tab. Adjust the ruler. One inch to the tab. Come up to the next indexing mark. We're going to come in half an inch and one inch. So we come in half an inch and then one inch and the one inch mark is going to go all the way across. Whoops, the one inch mark is going to go to, yeah, all the way across. So, half an inch, and then the one inch mark. you're on the back side so if you make a mistake who knows and above this we are going to come in half an inch and stop adjust the ruler to the right half an inch to the right from the right take our short ruler which is easy to handle Draw the diagonal lines in. Try to keep them at the correct angles. This will be the first of the two tabs, the one in front of the other one. Okay, I want to check that. Does that? Yeah, that looks right. Okay. And with that, we now need to draw the tab lines in. Flip it over so I can see my start and end lines. And that's the second tab. Now the third tab indents an inch and an eighth to the center inch and an eighth to the center, adjust, inch and an eighth to the center, step up to the next one, and this is going to be indent five eighths, and inch and an eighth, and that's going to be at a cross line, so five eighths from the right, and then inch and an eighth across. And then come up to the last line, reference line we have, and that's going to be five eighths. Five eighths. And I indexed that one because I would touch too far. Now I can take 
a little ruler which is really handy. Draw the diagonals. as accurate as it can. Draw the tab, the tongue, whatever you want to call it. Flip it around so you can see your start and end lines. Okay, so that's our pattern. Now, uh, next step is actually to do the second one because this will be the left, that'll be the right, whichever, once you start cutting them, keeping them apart. So I'm going to go off camera, I'm going to do the other side. This way here I have a reference mark on my left side that I can measure to the right, just my preference. I measure left to right, born in the USA. Uh, the tab, the, the back is 9 and 3 eighths wide. It's uh, 3 and 7 sixteenths high, 9 and 3 eighths. Its height is 3 and 7 sixteenths. So I see, can see my start end lines here. Now to reduce my variables, I'm going to use the same line for my tab, which is 5 sixteenths of an inch. That is going to come in half an inch. Need to reinforce that line just a bit. Extend this line so I can put the end of the tab in. Come in half an inch. Now the next thing that happens is come up half an inch. This is going to come in one inch. I don't like those measurements. Uh, something's wrong. That's half an inch. And that's half an inch. How come that looks so much different? So, ah, uh, I see why. Because this mark is 
not where it's supposed to be. I missed my line there. Okay, so this one's right. So redraw. Whoops, I didn't need to do that. Okay, no, I drew one too far. That's okay. Now I gotta come in half an inch on this or come in an inch on this. Just measure twice, cut once, buy a new piece of wood. One inch. Experienced woodworker. Now, because I drew this line through, I need to mark where half an inch is on each side because I need to put my angle line in. Okay. It gives me my build tab and this will not be a cut line. So I'm going to scribble on it so I don't cut it. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to come up a distance off of this because I want a clean measurement. So I'm going to come back to zero and uh, four and a half. Four and a half. Four and a half. Draw this line in. going to be 8 and 15 sixteenths, 8 and 15 sixteenths, and then this is 3 and 3 sixteenths. transferred uh, the back, the tab, and the liner off to our pattern. And the next thing we get to do is we get to do cutting. I've transferred the uh, patterns uh, and, and we're ready to go. If you use the razor knife to uh, cut into what I will call an inside corner, uh, this area and here, um, chances are um, you increase your probability of nicking uh, the finished side. What I do is I come over here, I take a straight blade X-Acto knife, and this one's getting dull. Uh, the chain store that I used to buy these blades from no longer carries them. All you need to do is cut the inside corners see if we can 
recover from that. I'm going to set that off. So we've got the two inside corners there. Now, on the sides, um, this is an in these two are inside corners. Let's see how lucky we can get here. Not real. Now something went wrong here. My measurements are off and I need to recover. So I'm going to do that on camera. Pull out my I want seven eighths of an inch. I want to uh, I want seven eighths of an inch. of an inch. That's seven eighths of an inch. Okay. That looks better. Caught that mistake. Okay. This is not an inside corner because we'll cut across it. This is not an inside corner. This is an inside corner. corner so that's the inside corners on this side so now I'm going to do the inside corners on this side and then the inside corners on the other piece <coughs> 